All right, if you're not done, that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and move on anyway. It's been about 10 minutes. Um, so for crew one, tell me, what would you define as a neutral zone? Or the line of scrimmage, that's what LOS stands for. Is it up already? It's up already. All right, uh, we put the line of scrimmage is where the ball's being snapped. The neutral zone is the space teams cannot line up in. Before the ball is snapped, the space between the two orange cones, there must be no more than seven people on the field for each team. Boom. All right, so the neutral zone is one yard wide. That means basically just a large step, put them down, okay? So we will have orange on the offensive side and the yellow cone on the defensive side. The way you can remember that is offense starts with an O and so does orange. No one can be in the neutral zone, very good. The only person required to be on the line of scrimmage is the snapper. We did change that rule about two or three years ago. So only the person snapping the ball needs to be on the line of scrimmage. Everyone else just needs to make sure that they're set and behind the line of scrimmage before the ball is snapped. Um, if they are not set before the, line of, before the ball is snapped, does everyone know what I mean by set? Okay, so everyone has to stop moving for at least a second before the ball is snapped. If they do not, it is a live ball penalty, which we will go over later. All right. Is this the next one, line of scrimmage? All right. Do we already snap one of the definitions you guys had to do? No, okay, all right. For the snap, it has to be one continuous motion. That does not mean I pick it up and I throw it. It has to be one continuous motion. You will see it a lot the first few weeks. People will they'll go back and then throw it. They'll pick it up and throw it. You'll see some funky stuff when it comes to snapping. Um, but make sure you guys are flagging that. Um, players who are receiving the snap, so most likely the quarterback will be receiving the snap, but whoever it is, they need to be two yards back from the line of scrimmage. So basically, they need to be two yards from the person who's snapping the ball because that ball needs to be on the line of scrimmage to start. Um, only one player may be in motion at the time of the snap. That means they are going parallel with the line of scrimmage. They cannot be moving towards the line of scrimmage. If they are moving towards the line of scrimmage, that is also a penalty. Um, and all players must be within five yards of the sideline. The reason we have that rule is because we don't want anyone um, just waiting off the field and they right before the ball is snapped hop on the field and be ready to play because they have an unfair advantage. We want everyone within the, I believe it's a, what is it, 40 yard field wide? 40 yard wide. Basically what this rule prevents is if this is a sideline and everybody's on that side of the field and I go like this, you know, on the field, I'm on cover, right? Now if we're training Casey, Casey sees me go like this and Casey now guards me, I have no penalty. Because he sees me and he's guarding me. So there's no unfair advantage that I gain by just stepping onto the field. So once I step on the field, if nobody sees me, I have to come five yards in. Cool. Alright, I'm ready to go. But if he sees me come on the field and he guards me, okay. you won't ever see that. Now we'll worry about that one a whole lot. Do you guys see that? Let's watch that one more time. Okay. What do you guys see? An illegal snap. You will see that a lot in our female games. Um, I hate to say it. It's just because, I mean, they don't play football before they come out there. I mean, I mean I'm picking on myself. I play on a flag football team. Um, so it's just sometimes it happens. Um, but you will see in other, t other divisions as well, but make sure you are flagging that. All right, so my group two, what's a live ball versus a dead ball? Yeah, unfortunately, you can't. You just got to remember what you said. Uh, well, a live ball is any ball that's in play or in possession of the player. Mm -hmm. A dead ball is anyone that, like, had, like the whistle is going to blow dead. Okay. So, in order for a ball to become live, a legal snap has to happen, okay? And as soon as the legal snap happens, anything in between that and when the ball is blown dead, that is a live ball. So any junk in the middle there, that is a live ball. As soon as the official blows his whistle, the ball is then declared dead. And anything between that and the ready for, or the next snap, excuse me, the ball is dead. 
So anything that happens in between the ball becoming dead and the next snap is dead, what, what kind of things happen in between there that we could possibly throw a flag for? Uh, but would you hold it after the ball? Unsportsmanlike. Unsportsmanlike, thank you. So our most common dead ball penalty will be the unsportsmanlike. We also have other things that are happen right before the snap, like a false start, an offsides, encroachment, stuff like that. But the most common, bigger dead ball penalty are unsportsmanlikes. All right. So the play ends when a player goes out of bound with the ball. Any body part of a player touches the ground. That means if their hand hits the ground, if their elbow, their butt, their knee, they Hands go oh, sorry. Hand you can touch the ground, just like a regular football. Elbow, knee, hip, butt, anything like that. That's that's dead. Basically, any extended surface. Okay. When the pass is incomplete, that play is dead. A backwards pass hits the ground, that is dead. AKA, we don't have any fumbles in flag football. We don't because it is a chance for injury because everyone dives in, no one's wearing a helmet, so we do not have fumbles. So as soon as that ball hits the ground, it is blown dead. If we have a simultaneous catch, meaning both two players on opposite teams go up for the ball, they catch the ball, and they both come down and possess it the whole time, that play is dead. We'll go over a simultaneous catch, which you do after that in a moment. When a flag belt is removed legally, um, if the flags fall off, just because in their running motion they accidentally knock off their flags, at that point it is one hand tag. So as soon as it's one hand tag between the shoulders and the knees, okay? Make sure if you do see someone with the ball that has had their flag belts fallen off, make sure you are yelling to the teams that it is one hand tag at that point. That way they know what to do. Because most likely our teams don't know what to do at that point and they're just gonna stop playing and that person's gonna go score a touchdown. So make sure you are communicating that. Um, if a punch touches a, the receiving team and then hits the ground, so if I try to catch it and it just goes right through my hands, it's considered a muff, the play is dead because that is basically a fumble. Remember, we don't have fumbles. Um, and then if a player from the kicking team touches the ball beyond the line of scrimmage, so I punt it and Chris is on my team and he sprints down the field and he touches it before the other team does, that is a dead ball. The other. Uh, at that spot. Okay? Balls away. So the play ended as soon as the incomplete pass hit the ground. And it started as soon as the ball was snapped. This one, the ball became dead as soon as the flags were pulled. Okay? All right. What is a running play, crew three? The player who has the ball. The player who has the ball. That's it. In possession of the ball. In possession. Okay. So a runner is a player in possession of the ball. They may not. I was just trying to get you to say they were running. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. Um, they may not stiff arm the defense as considered flag guarding. So any effort for the runner, any effort the runner makes to not let the other team touch their flag belt is flag guarding. It is a penalty. Um, the ball may be handed in any direction. So I can hand it forward, I can hand it back, but that does not mean I just do a little toss. As soon as there's a little bit of air under it, that is a, a toss. And if it is a forward toss, in front of the line of scrimmage as a penalty. We'll go over, like I said, we'll go over penalties a lot later. Um, and if the ball strikes the ground, it is dead as soon as it hits the ground and it belongs to whoever fumbled the ball. We do not have fumbles, okay? I cannot stress that enough. Make sure you guys are blowing that dead as soon as it hits the ground. Don't let there be a few seconds where you're just like, oh, I don't know what, what happens in this case because then you're gonna have people diving in butting heads and we have a chance for a concussion at that point. Um, this also means when I snap the ball, if the, fumble, if the quarterback does not catch the ball and it drops and hits the ground, that is also considered a fumble and so we're going to blow the ball dead and that happens as well. So that 
that person with the football was considered the runner. All right. What is a passing play? Someone throws a forward pass to from beyond the line scrimmage. From beyond the line scrimmage? Behind. Behind. Okay. I think you got probably about 75% of a passing play. Technically, passing, you can throw backwards as well. Um, it is a loose ball at that point, um, so I would think it would be considered a passing play at that point. But a team is permitted one forward pass per down. Um, that means I can't throw it forward to Allie. She runs back behind the line of scrimmage and then throws it forward again. You only get one per down. Um, and it must be it must be thrown before there's a change of possession. Okay. Once the ball is thrown, it is considered a pass until it is caught, caught or incomplete. So anytime it is in the air, it is considered a pass. Any player is eligible to, pa to catch a pass. We don't have any restrictions like they do in high school, college, or NFL. Um, anyone can catch it, um, including the center, the person who snaps the ball. Um, and a team may throw as many backwards passes as they like. So I can throw 20 backwards passes as I want. And it doesn't matter where I am on the field, I can throw a backwards pass. One thing you got to remember for this is it, it's one legal forward pass behind the line of scrimmage. So if I break, this is my imaginary line of scrimmage, I go like this, large and a deep flag, and I flip back to Casey. Mm -hmm. Casey then can throw a legal forward pass as long as it's behind this line. So just remember that, that as long as they're behind that orange ball spotter, they can throw a legal forward pass. So I can run 30 yards, backwards pitch, backwards pitch, backwards pitch, pitch, pass. One legal forward pass from behind the line of scrimmage. So that puts one cat out. Alright, so you guys just went, so we got this crew back here. What is a catch? Possession of the ball after it's been thrown. Okay. Is there any other criteria you think that needs to be met in order for it to be a catch? To a receiver. Someone beside the quarterback. Where's the catch at any bad? Out of bounds. How many feet have to be in bounds? Four. Well let him answer it. How many feet have to be in bounds? Uh one. One. Just like college or high school. Mm -hmm. And you make sure you have full possession of the ball before you go out of bounds. And if they go for a dive, think of the college or high school, college man, oh, if I go diving and I go to the ground, that ball pops out, it's incomplete. So they have to maintain that catch to the ground if they go to the ground. If they catch, possession, take three steps, and then follow it, they have it, they have the three steps, it's a catch. But if I go diving, catch, hit the ground, and it pops out, incomplete. Just like it would be on Saturday or Sunday. So this is basically what Andy just said. You have to have possession of the ball. Um, and that is, when in doubt, they have possession of the ball. Don't, don't try to take the ball away from them. If you think 75% chance that they kept possession of the ball the whole time, give it to them. Because our goal is to let them play. Um, their first contact inbound, or first contact with the ground has to be inbounds. So if I'm going to catch the ball, my first step is out of bounds, but my second foot lands inbounds, it's an incomplete pass because my first foot landed out of bounds. Okay? So make sure you guys are watching their feet. Um, if there is a ball that is simultaneously, ca simultaneously caught by the offense and defense, which you most likely won't see because it's really hard to do, but if it is, the ball is dead right then and the ball is awarded to the offense. Okay. Um, if someone catches it and is going to the ground, they need to keep possession of the ball the whole way down, um, which is nothing different than what you would see any any other type of football. And if it is an incomplete pass, we are going to do the next play from the previous spot. Okay? Let's go. Four wide receivers for Sam Van Doyle. He's flushed. Bowers chasing it. That ball, 13. Let's so watch. Did he get his, get his feet in? Did he have possession of the ball? He's flushed. Bowers chasing it. That ball, 13. Control. Ball hits the ground, but it doesn't move. 
So we have to catch. Just like we would on Saturday or Sunday. So this is what we got to play. This is a college game. You can catch it, it can hit the ground, and as long as it doesn't move, we can catch it. More than likely than I get enough out here to hold that, hold that tight. It's going to go whoop, and out. So just run it. This is a good view. The ground. This is the thing. He goes to the ground. It's there. And it moves. Right there. It's a no he catch. He have possession, right? He catches it, goes up, stumbles, 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 still trying to fight for it, goes to the ground. Now, if he caught it, took two steps, and then dove, we don't have it. He's going to the ground with that. The arm, the knee, not, and this is uh, considered something other than two feet or one foot in this case. Yep. So if he lands on his butt, it's legal. So that's what that one's showing. All right, so back to this group. What is screed blocking? So screed blocking is putting your body in front of a like opposing defender uh, coming at you. Typically, you have to have your hands behind your back, and you can lean into the block, and then you can extend your feet out to try to trip the individual from going around you. You can only get in their way. Okay. Um, so the d defense may rush the snap in our, in our flag football league. Um, either team may obstruct an opponent by getting in their way, but you cannot initiate contact. And like Casey said, you cannot be bigger than your body. It's no different than in basketball, you trying to take a charge. You can't stick an elbow out, you can't stick a knee out. You gotta stay within your frame. Uh, as soon as you stick out a body part and you initiate contact, we do have a penalty there. Um, and we will have officials who are be on the lot who will be on the line in order to see that. So um, it shouldn't be too hard to get those penalties. Um, you'll see a lot of this in our more uh, physical close games um, because they are trying to get to the quarterback at all costs and they just initiate contact. Um, a good rule of thumb is. If the defense is running in and they initiate contact, more than likely they'll end up on top or the other way, vice versa, if the offense is initiating contact. But basically you want to look for body displacement. If I'm rushing the line and Jonathan, um, I run into Jonathan, you see Jonathan do this, obviously I made contact with him. Um, you will have some people flopping. Try to officiate to the best of your ability. But if you, there was contact there, we are, our efforts are to protect our players. So if you think that there's a slight chance that they made illegal contact, throw that penalty. They gain an advantage somehow by making contact, throw that penalty. But you will have flops. I'm saying that because I flopped before on the football field. It's not something that we should do, and it's not something that we should reward either, but make sure you are flagging contact. Screen block is used by the offense to prevent the opponent from getting to an advantageous spot on the field. Contact during a screen block may or may not be legal. The use of screen blocking is common in flag football. The legal screen greatly reduces the potential for injury. Screen blockers must have their hands to their side or behind their back. Any use of the hands, arms, or elbow during the screen block is illegal. <laughs> 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 If the 
example, it charges into an offensive player who has established position during a stream block. It is illegal contact. All right, one thing you need to if they have females who are putting their arms up here to protect themselves, that is absolutely legal as well. As long as they're not using their arms to push off the defender or the um, offensive person, that is legal. Just because it is better for females to have their arms up instead of behind their back, that is legal. You can also have males who put their hands in front of their waist like this. That is legal as long as they're not sticking their elbows out or pushing off. Okay, So there's one thing I would like to point out that's different than what the video says. So let's watch this one more time. Who would you call the contact on? I heard offense over here. Anyone have anything different? Right. So if you guys will watch this one more time. If you watch this dude right here, he sticks out his elbow really far. So he's the one initiating the contact, so you would want to throw it on the offense. And it, it shows that we're actually making a call, not just going, oh, what's going on? So what about there? We'll watch it one more time. Who would you call the contact on? It shows that we're actually making a call, not just going, oh, what's going on? So he just barrels through him. It's a good call, so I'm the defense for that one. All right. This group right here, define punts for us. Whenever punter takes the ball to the other team. Gen yeah, basically. Um, so we do have punting in our game. Um, one rule that we need to make sure that we're following is that the team has to announce to the referee that they are punting. Um, more often than not, if it's fourth down, the ref is already going to be asking you if they want to punt or not. But it is also your job as the ref, as soon as you know that the team is punting, you need to announce it to the other team. Because there are no um, sneaky punts in our league. They're just we ta We've taken that out. We're not going to mess with that. The punt needs to be one continuous motion. They can't s start here, stop because I see someone, so that's not the direction they want to kick it, and then Get, try to kick it that way as well. Um, it has to be one continuous motion. The offense needs to have one, the minimum number of players on the line. What's the minimum number of players on the, on the line? Just one. They just need that snapper on the line. Um, the offense also cannot cross the line of scrimmage until the ball is kicked. It is no different than any other football league. So they need to make sure that they are staying behind. That doesn't mean that they can back up five feet and they, or they need to just be stationary in the line. They can back up five feet and run towards the line as long as they're crossing that line as soon as the ball is kicked. So you can use runners. They um, kick off in college and NFL. If they cross that line of scrimmage before the ball is kicked, it's a live ball penalty. We just drop a marker and let that play happen. So if they want to back everybody up and start running, they can do that. It's illegal. They just can't cross until it's kicked, just like a kickoff. And we do not have fair catches in flag football. You won't see that. All right. Um, neither teams may be advanced beyond the line of scrimmage until the ball is kicked. Um, the receiving team can block the punt. They're just not allowed to go across the line. So if they have a 6'5 guy on their team and he can jump really high in front of the kicker, as long as he doesn't cross that line, that is absolutely OK. But as he, neither teams are allowed to cross the line. You will not see them trying to block it very often because on the off chance that they step in the neutral zone and jump in front of them, they're not going to risk the chance of a penalty, especially since that kicker can start three, four, five yards behind the line of scrimmage. You're not going to see it. But if you do, just remind them that they need to stay behind the line of scrimmage. Um, once the punt crosses the goal line, the ball is dead. Um, they do not need to be in possession of it for it to be a touchback. So as soon as it crosses that goal line, it is dead, and we're going to put it on the 14. <clears throat> All right.
So you saw the um, offense stayed behind the line of scrimmage, and so the defense. I'm gonna let that one. Yeah. Go. I would probably tell the next time they make sure you don't stop. In our game, I let that one go because that's about as clean of a punt as you can get. All right. What's the safety? Well, it's when you get taken down in your own end zone because your momentum took you in there. And you purposely went in there. You purposely went in there. All right. What's the momentum roll? Right. Perfect. All right. So the safety is, like he said, was when you go into the end zone behind you on your own power. The momentum rule becomes an effect is if you, as you're catching the ball, you go in behind your um, goal line into the end zone behind you, and then you're deflagged. If your momentum takes you in, um, then it is just a touchback. Okay. Any questions on that? You won't see a whole lot of these plays. Do you have something to add? Yeah. Okay. Keep, keep it spot to this one. Oh, I was done. All right. So I've got my goal line right here. Pretend that's a nice solid painted line. My goal line. How much of this? This is going to be the end zone right here. And this is, this is in plus. I have my three yard try. My hash marks. Pretend this is my football. How much of this football? has to be out of this end zone for safety not to be called. That much? Good, we have no problem. Is this a safety? Yes. Is this a safety? Yes. Is this a safety? Yes. Can't see it. Aha! Can't see it. We'll talk about positioning a little bit. The entire ball has got to be outside the outside of the end zone not to be a safety. On a touchdown, the tip of the ball just has to cross the line for a touchdown to be called. So remember that on a safety, this entire ball has to be on the outside. So this has to be right about there for a safety not to be called. All right, this is the momentum rule <clears throat> in more detail. Did anyone have any questions on this? No? Okay. I feel like we've beat this one to death, so I'm not going to read it word for word. If you see the back judge on this, you'll see that uh, him go back to the spot. So he sees that. Uh, hopefully this will show. You'll see them come back to about the two yard line of the ball spot. So you see it. He comes back in. He gives this signal to stop the clock and not this one. It's a different signal. So he comes back to the field of play to show them that there's a momentum. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and go over this one because this is probably something that most of you guys haven't seen before. Uh, but in Co-Rec, we do have open and closed plays. All series will start with an open play. And open means that any receiver is eligible to catch the ball. Okay? Um, as soon as there is a male to male completion when the play is open, that next play will then be closed. And then a closed play means that a female needs to be either the passer or the receiver in a forward pass for positive yards. Okay? Um, so if we have two male-to-male -male completions back-to-back, -back, that is a penalty. You will throw it. Okay? Um, let's see. It's right here. In order to open a play, like I said, it needs to involve a female. It needs to be a legal forward pass. Um, and the play must be for positive yards. You will see your really, really good correct teams will have that female quarterback who can step in on a closed play because then everyone's still eligible to catch the ball. But if you have solely just a male quarterback on a closed play, unfortunately only female receivers are eligible to catch the ball. However, there is one exception and ish to this rule. If I throw it not me. If Jonathan throws it to Andy and Andy catches it in the air and before his feet touches the ground, tosses it to me, is that legal? 
Yeah, because what does Andy have to do in order to make it a catch? He's got to maintain possession and land in bounds. So if he never lands before he gets rid of the ball, then he never technically caught the ball. So you, you might see that once or twice in the season, but that is that one trick play that happens with open and close plays. Yeah, another FT, pull that one out. It works. So if you play, if you play pull that one out. If a male runs through the line of scrimmage, the next play will be closed. So a male can only run through the line of scrimmage when the play is open. If a female runs through the line of scrimmage, doesn't matter, it doesn't affect the play. However, it cannot open the play because there was no um, forward pass involved, okay? So again, we're trying to get teams to utilize their females in a correct league. Um, penalties do not affect the openness or closeness of a play. That means if I throw it to Jonathan and I open up the play, but there's a he flag guarded after he caught it. Just because he flag guarded after he caught it, technically we met all the requirements. That doesn't affect whether or not it opened or closed. <clears throat> oh, here's one. If the male runs through the line of scrimmage when the play is closed, the penalty is illegal male advancement. Okay, that is a, probably will be on the test, so make sure you guys remember that. If a male runs through the line of scrimmage on a closed play, it is illegal male advancement. It is a five-yard penalty. Okay. If on a closed play, it is a male-to-male -male pass behind the line of scrimmage, and then the ball, he advances the ball through the line of scrimmage, it is an illegal male reception. So anytime you have a male-to-male -male reception, even if it's him catching the ball through the line and then run through the line of scrimmage, it is a male-to-male male, illegal male reception. And that is a five-yard penalty. And it's important that you know that it's an illegal male reception because this is a loss of down. Because all illegal forward pass penalties are a loss of down. So make sure you guys are, <coughs> excuse me, are remembering that. This is also the only penalty that affects open and close. So if you have a male to male reception, it is a five yard penalty, it's a loss of down, and the next play, no matter what happened in that play, the play is closed. Unless it was a, there's a change of possession, the other team has it. Okay? Any questions about open and closed? Do you have anything to add? Fantastic. We did a lot of other stations on this, so. Don't feel like it. Can you throw to a female every down? Yeah. You could, if you have an excellent female receiver, you can throw to her every play and there will never be a restriction. The plays will always be open. That's why having a female quarterback is also important. Because if you have a female who can throw to every single player the whole game, you never have to worry about open and closed. Here we go. So make sure you are announcing it before every play because you want the defense to know who they have to guard. All right, so for overtime, this is if it is tied at the end of regulation, the visiting team will call the coin toss. They have the same options that they did at the beginning of the half, except they cannot defer. They can have offense, defense, or choose the side of the field. They will, all, they will do all overtime drives towards the same goal line the whole time because we do not want any teams to have an unfair advantage. So if they say, I want to play on that end zone, we're going to play at that end zone for however many overtimes we have. Okay? Um, <clears throat> You will switch who goes first every time you have a different overtime. So if my team goes first in the first overtime and your team goes second, if we have another overtime after that, your team will go first and then my team will go second. You have one timeout for the entire overtime. That is if we have one overtime or if we have 15 overtimes. You have one timeout. So make sure you let your teams know that and let them know that they need to use that wisely. Why they will need a time a timeout during overtime? Because it's such a short period of time, I don't know. But if they use it, it's a one and done. 
you're going to start on the 10 yard line and they have the goal line to gain. I believe they have, do they have four downs to get there? Or just one try? Four downs. Four downs. Good. I'm just making sure I got that right. So they have four downs to get into the end zone and then they can go for the try, a one, two, or a three, and it's the other team's ball. Okay? Question? Say they have like one or two timeouts left from the regulation. Does that they don't carry over. Good question, though. Any other questions on overtime? Yeah. Um, closed and open, does that? It still goes in effect in overtime. Yeah, it was, you will start your drive with an open play because you're starting a new possession, but yes, it does, it's still in effect in overtime. Open and close also is still in effect. If it's a male-to-male -male reception to score a touchdown, that next try is closed. So it's still, it carries over to tries as well. Any questions on overtime? All right. All right, sportsmanship. I told you guys about this earlier. This is that one key, one of the key factors you need to make sure you have written on your scorecard at the end of the night. This is how we rate our teams. The reason we have sportsmanship ratings is because we do have some participants that are just buttholes. They are. Just because they, they think intramurals is the end all be all and if they lose this game it's your fault and nobody else's even though they dropped six passes in the first quarter. Um, so we do have a one through five rating, five being the best, one being the worst. It's really important that you guys are, communicate with your team or your partners on this one to make sure you're all on the same page. Teams have to have a three average sportsmanship rating in order to be eligible for the playoffs. So if they're just buttholes the whole season, more than likely, if you guys give them the appropriate sportsmanship rating, they will not make it to the playoffs. After every game, you need to make sure that you are giving your sportsmanship rating to your, your scorekeeper, your sport assistant, or your supervisor, whoever is going to be recording it on the score sheet that night. Also make sure it's very clearly written on your scorecard. All right, so fives are for those teams that were perfect. They didn't argue with any calls. I highly doubt in flag football you will ever see a five. The only time I think I've ever seen a true five is in a volleyball game because those are, tend to be our happier sports. Um, so you probably won't have a five in flag football. Fours are for someone who they argue with a few calls, but they're respectful towards you and the other teams. They just, they really didn't like that flag guarding call in the second quarter, but that's okay. They were basically pretty good, so we're gonna give them a four. Three are for people who they just, they argue, you know, at least 10 calls a quarter, um, but they're not necessarily totally disrespectful about it, um, but they could have one to two unsportsmanlike conducts. These are your middle of the road teams. So majority of your teams will get threes. You might have a few get fours, a few get twos, but a majority of them will get threes. Twos are if those teams that argue just about every call, they give, you get more than two in sportsmanlike conducts. And the one thing with twos and ones is that you need to make sure you are documenting why they got a two and a one. Okay, so it's either on an ejection report or you're writing it on the score sheet at the end of your shift. If your supervisor does not ask you for documentation for a two or a one, make sure you're giving it to them anyway. They sh excuse me, they should ask you no matter what. But like I said, they're gonna have at least two fields going on at a night. Plus they're gonna have the protest on this field and torn ACL on this field and there's only one of them. So make sure that you are reminding them that they, they need to get documentation from you. And a number, a team that gets a one is a team that has no, one, no control. More likely they had multiple ejections. Um, if you get to the point where you have a two or a one team, make sure you are letting your supervisor know before the game's over. Just say, hey, come watch this game. Why don't you come pay attention to this game over here? That way you have another set of eyes. Also, your supervisor has the authority. If they think a team is totally out of control, they can end a game before it's over and forfeit that team and give the other team the win. So make sure if you do have a team that's that out of control that you do get your supervisor. All right, so handling conflict. Hopefully most of you guys are fairly comfortable handling conflict because I hate to break it to you, you're gonna have to do it as an official. Um, so the first, um, <clears throat> there's different levels of conflict that you're gonna have. You're gonna have somebody who is complaining about a call but they're not personally attacking you. 
That's not necessarily a horrible thing. If you think it's getting out of hand, do address it. But if they're not directly attacking you, I wouldn't throw an unsportsmanlike penalty. Um, as soon as they use profane language um, that is loud enough for everyone to hear, you need to, uh, you need to penalize that. If it's just under their breath, they say, shit, I should have caught that ball. That's when you just say, hey, I heard you. Let's not do that again. Watch your language. But if they say the F word really loud, you need to throw that unsportsmanlike penalty. Um, anytime they are baiting their opponent, you need to throw a penalty flag. Anytime there's any type of taunting. And that includes spiking the football, diving into the end zone unnecessarily, or any end zone dances. Okay? We are not the NFL. We're not going to loosen our end zone celebration um, rules like they did this year. All right, so these are the steps we take. So the first one is that quiet word that's, you hear a cuss word under their breath. They're just questioning one too many calls or they were close to being penalized for something. Uh, that's when you're gonna use that quiet word, just a one-on-one -on -one conversation, just walk alongside them and say, hey, just, you know, I heard that, I see that, make sure you stop doing that. Uh, but you don't necessarily want to bring it to the other people's attention. That's when you're gonna use a quiet word. Um, the next one is a public warning. That's when you are letting everyone on the field know that what they're doing is unacceptable. So you're gonna, if they yell, <clears throat> they're just complaining about calls over and over and over again. That's when you go, that's enough. I hear you, but you need to stop. Because you want everyone on the field to know it's unacceptable. The third step is a captain's meeting. If you are calling a captain's meeting, I highly suggest you do this in the first half. As soon as you do it in the second half, you might as well not even do it because they're not listening to you anymore. Um, but this is where you're getting the captains together and you're saying, hey, captains, it is your responsibility to clean this up. If you do not get your teams to clean up the game, then we're going we're gonna to throw in sportsmanlike penalties on you. Because them, as a captain, they're in charge of their team's conduct and their team's knowledge of the rules. So make sure that they are taking care of that. <clears throat> Unsportsmanlike conduct, um, that is another really good tool that you guys can use. That's basically, if you've had someone who is just being a real a-hole um, and you think that what they have done after the multiple warnings deserves an unsportsmanlike, go ahead and throw it. It's just like in soccer when you get a yellow card because you need two in order to get ejected. So the first one, it is a big deal because it is a 10 yard penalty as well, but it's not an ejectionable offense. So don't overuse them, but don't think that these that an unsportsmanlike is, an un, is the end of the world. Some players will think it's the end of the world, but it's really not. Um, the last resort is an ejection. Um, and if you do eject somebody, you have to fill out paperwork and that person has According to our handbook, they have up to two minutes to leave our facility and they are going to be escorted off by our supervisor. Um, so make sure that you're using it as a last resort, but also don't let people walk all over you because you don't want to use this. Okay, that is a resource that we do have for you. We also do have supervisors out there. If they see that you're just getting bullied by our participants and you're not willing to throw them out, they will throw them out for you. I think Mr. Kingston would have had. He had at least six ejections in one semester, I think. Um, so we're not afraid to do it. Um, we don't like to do it, but we will do it. But make sure that you're consistent with both teams. Um, if you are officiating a game where you know majority of the team or you do play on that team, try your best to get switched off that game because we do have field, two fields going on at the same time. Um, and also don't make threats. Stay consistent. Don't say one more word and you're gone because what's the next thing that they're going to say? Word. They're going to say word and you're going to have to throw them out for saying word. That's pretty ridiculous. So don't make threats that you can't, that are just ridiculous like that. And this is our line for our competitive sports program. Make sure you are drawing your line in concrete, not sand. You're staying true to um, the different ways of handling conflict and you are forcing it both ways the same. The thing I've got to have on this is I don't expect you to go out there and be able to handle every situation immediately right away. I've done this for a very, very long time and I'm still learning and I'm still growing. So if you have a situation and you're like, can I handle it right? What would they do? They did X, Y, and Z. What would you give them? I sit quiet down 
And I'd be like, well, you probably should have rejected them. Now we got to bridge that. <coughs> but if they come out there and you're like, I threw an unsportsman like, and I'm like, well, maybe an objection? We're getting close. So you've got to find your, it, wherever you, you think you fit in. Because I can tell you, your college students repping college students' games. So what does that mean? You're going to hear a lot of F-bombs. You're mm -hmm. going to hear a lot of shit. You're going to hear a lot of uh, uh, hells, dance, and a lot of other things that you probably never thought you'd hear on a football field. You're going to hear that. You know what I do? You, you drop the F word. A lot of the three of us, four of us here. Go on, man, work with me. I build a little bit of credibility with him because I say, shit, here it cuts. I'm gonna let you be a college student. I understand you may, may not use those words. He drops F bomb and the walls shake in this building. I've gotta do something. That's at least an unsportsman. Line. You look at it, F you man, you got to go. You start making threats to somebody else, I don't care what it is, you gotta go. I don't care if it's this much, I'm gonna you up. And you hear it? Gotta go. Now, if you don't hear what I'm saying to you and I'm in your face trying to point and I give you a little bit of shove, at least I'm sports like that. You've gotta find what works for that speed. Flag football doesn't have as many ejections as other sports, but it has more unsportsmanlike comments. So what that means is you're probably gonna get one. And you're on this team, you're probably gonna get one. May not be every game, but it's not hard to win. It's not hard to shift. But I guarantee you will throw. It. If you look at me and I try not to do this, is if somebody does something stupid, and I don't want to do it, I'm not. All you're gonna see this is for me. I'm gonna look at you and go, I'm not gonna make any face because I'm not gonna tell you to throw them out. If I think it's so egregious, I've got to step in, that's a problem. Or if she has to step in. My supervisors have a little more latitude. But if it's so egregious, I got to step in. I'm going to go to somebody and say, throw a flag out of your whistle. He's gone. And then I'll get him off of here. It's an art. It's something you've got to find how you got to find your niche. Because the way I handle conflict is not the same way she handles conflict, or the same way she handles conflict. It's a similar method, but it's but you gotta find that that art. When I first started, I was like, poof, 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 everybody's gone. And nobody played no sports. That's not good. I gotta have at least somebody to play my in my program. So I, you gotta find a way to work with them. So figure out your niche. If you're one that takes a lot of crap, find a way, you find that line, alright, there it is. There's not sports about it. If you don't take any crap, find a way to take a little bit more. You're <laughs> this is the worst job to have on campus. Because as soon as you've gone those stripes, guess what? I can say anything I want to, you can't do a damn thing about it. It's what you see on TV, right? Balls. They get paid a lot more than $8 an hour on TV. They get about four more digits behind that number. Uh -huh. So, you don't take as much crap as they take on TV. So find how you want to handle conflict. And I can tell you, that the way you handle it in one is not the way you can handle it at the end of the season. So, find that, that in between. I can tell you, if you eject somebody, write down everything you did. They started with this, and this, and this, and here's what they did. Because I can tell you, they dropped the f bomb really, really loud. I painted a picture, but I need to know what else they did. Spike the ball, kick the ball, try to take my head off, whatever it is. Write that in the report. Because then I can have that conversation done. So you drop the F-word really, really loud. Then you took your teammate's shirt off, away from the air, and then try to spike the football on someone's face. Like, no, that's not what happened. Well, that's my report, that's what I have from them to go So if you if you write the report and you witness it, put the same dang thing in it, in your words. Because I can have I say two officials and a supervisor that collaborate on this and the same thing. Cool. All right, I have five minutes. I need you guys to wake up because I'm going to do a little bit of time.